This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Chad Daybell, a new hearing uh, coming up on whether or not to have cameras in the court. That uh, is going to be taking place very soon. What's interesting uh, to me about uh, this case is the fact that Chad uh, (laughs) and his defense... Uh, they want cameras uh, in the court. Usually the argument is is just the opposite. The state themselves saying, yeah, we uh, we don't want cameras uh, in the court. Siobhan, this has uh, obviously been a crazy story from the get-go. Uh, now we're about to see, you know, the, the sequel uh, with Chad's uh, trial coming up. Uh, what do you make of this request of, of wanting to have cameras in the court on his side? Is this a, a strategic move in some way, shape, or form? Or is this Chad looking to take his last stand as this biblical leader and, you know, mm-hmm. hear my message in front of the mm-hmm. cameras? It, it may be both. And I, I think that's a really good guess. I, I would think the attorneys would not go along and support something unless they thought that this is going to be of some benefit in some way. Now, exactly what they're thinking, I'm not sure. But it's interesting because the man is in many ways a performer and obviously loves attention. And the cameras being on him may elevate his mood. Is there a thought that he can still convince the world that he's right? Mm -hmm. And we certainly saw that with Lori's brief statement that she made in court, that she still thinks she's right. With Lori, she seemed to be losing touch with reality, even increasingly after she was jailed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the smirking that she would do that we heard about and giggling at times inappropriately would certainly not have served her, you know, if this had been televised. So is this idea that Chad is going to present really well and therefore influence the world in his favor. And that's going to be of some benefit. That's my best guess. Yeah. How interesting. I mean, because at the end of the day, it's not the public that's going to decide this. The public already has their opinions. But to, I don't know if it's a, uh, let's get ahead of this, you know, before it it gets to trial. I I don't know. It's it's so bizarre. When we look at the behavior of what we saw from Lori prior to her trial, yes, the smirking, the uh, seemingly extreme disconnect from all of reality. Uh, Chad, when we see him, not just the other day, in an online hearing, he's always sitting there very stoic, wearing the white shirt and the red tie. Mm -hmm. It's Mm-hmm. I think he only has one set of shirts and ties. Maybe that's it. But he just kind of has that very stoic look. It's hard to just go and say, what do you think about him based on that behavior? Because it's not really demonstrating a whole lot. But it is quite different than what, what Lori did. So mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you that. Where, what type of mindset do you think Chad is at going into this trial early next year, which is not that far away? Mm-hmm. My guess is Chad has not deteriorated in jail. And I think Lori really, her mental problems amplified. I mean, she obviously had severe mental problems before being having a delusional disorder. But I think her ability to hold it together and present as a normal person, which she had been doing, she lost that, mm-hmm. you know, and it really was a deterioration. He's not deteriorated in that way. As you say, he presents like a normal person. Mm -hmm. And he probably can give a cogent testimony. I mean, it'll be delusional, but he'll be cogent. And I I think that's probably the big difference. At at this point, if you're the attorneys for uh, Chad Daybell, are are you putting together a defense that has some sort of hope of exonerating him or getting a lesser sentence? Or is it simply, let's try and get him not killed by the state at this point? I think it's the latter. I mean, I I can't imagine being the attorney in these cases trying to defend either Lori or Chad. I mean, it's got to take a lot of creativity. And um, I don't see any way that this man is ever going to be free again. And so if they can beat the death penalty in some way, that's probably the best they're thinking they can do. Be very interesting to uh, to watch that play out or if we're going to see any other twists and turns in it. Uh, the only other one I, I do wonder about is, is Chad capable of flipping on Lori? And, and does that even make a difference uh, at this point? Mm-hmm. I could only mm-hmm. see the, the one uh, area where maybe there's some leverage is just that, the death penalty of uh, if you're going to testify against her, we'll take that off the table. But I don't see them uh, pulling much else back or, or offering right. him much more for more information. 
Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.